BF Day proudly presents Mr. M's Math Games and Math Breakthroughs. Hello and welcome to episode 8 of Mr. M's Math Games and Math Breakthroughs. It's so great to see you again. So today we are going to learn how to play a online game with a partner. And some of you volunteered to play a game with a partner in your homeroom today. So um, if you volunteered, you'll be watching. And then everybody else, we are eventually going to make this work. So everyone should be paying attention to this game. We are going to play the product game, which is the first game that I introduced to you a while back. And I'm actually going to play the game against one of my college buddies, who is now a professor, um, who has a doctorate in the University of Washington. His name is Dr. Brown. And so um, in a moment, you'll get to see me playing a game against him. And you'll get to see kind of how we play this game uh, virtually. And you'll do the same thing with your virtual uh, partner um, later today if you volunteered. And then we're going to learn about the Electoral College, um, which definitely has some math. Um, in it. And so that is a video from Ted Ed, and then we'll have a flip grid question after that. So um, I'm going to turn it now to our game that we started with Dr. Brown. Um, and so I'm going to explain a little bit about how to make sure that you have the PowerPoint if you are the host of the game. Um, and then you'll see me play the game against Dr. Brown. All right. See you soon. All right. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to show you here how to um, set up if you are the host for your partner game. So I'm going to scroll down here. As you can see, I am currently in my um, <clears throat> Schoology page. And so I'm going to scroll down to my Schoology page and go to the week of November 2nd and click on Wednesday, November 4th. And it's currently unpublished, um, but when you get to see this, you'll, you'll get to see it. Um, and I haven't added anything else yet because I filmed this um, on a different day, but I have the product game materials, which is the game that we're playing. And then I'm going to download the product game PowerPoint. So I'm going to click on this. And as you can see, it's going to load onto Schoology and I don't want that. Um, I'm going to let it load. And what I want to do is I actually want to download this onto my computer. And so I'm going to click here, download. And then it says open with, I'm going to say, okay. And now it's going to load it onto my uh, screen. And it's going to take a little bit. Um, if you are not playing with a partner game, if you did not volunteer, then you are just playing um, the product game with anyone at your house, if you're able to, or any other math game that we've learned so far. So um, it is loading right now. So hopefully that'll open up soon. It's taking a little longer than I would like it to. Let's see here. Ah, here, I downloaded it. All right. I guess I should have clicked open up. So now it's loading up here. And again, this is perfect because it might take you a little longer to do. Here we go. Um, and here it is a product game. So I'm going to open that up. Double clicking there. And as you can see here, I now have it open. Um, so when you, um, in a moment, you're going to see me playing with Dr. Brown and um, I will have this already up and running. So if you are the host, this draw feature will be very, very important. So you're going to be going in between drawing and selecting. So when you're selecting, you can move these pieces. Um, and then when you want to draw the X's or O, you'll go to draw with touch. And then you put X's on the, the screen with your mouse or X's or O's. So um, good luck. Um, and hopefully you enjoy the game that I play with Dr. Brown. All right. All right, everybody. Um, so here is my good friend from college. Um, this is uh, talk, Dr. Brown. And um, we actually used to play in a band together back in the day. And um, he now is a, he works at the University of Washington. So um, Dr. Brown, welcome. Hey there. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what you do at the University of Washington? So I'm a researcher um, and I research um, all of the good and bad things that can happen when you implant computers into people's brains. Awesome. Wow, that's so cool. It's crazy. So maybe, maybe Mr. Oligario will have you over and talk, talk to, her, to the kids about that stuff. That sounds great. Um, so we're going to play the product game. And as you can see here, I have the PowerPoint up on my computer. 
And so I downloaded it so that I can control everything. So I'm going to be the host for this game. So as you can see here, I put my name here, Mr. Maldonado, player one, and Dr. Brown, player two. And so uh, when I go, I will type everything in. And then when Dr. Brown goes, he's, he's going to tell me what to do, and then I'm going to do it for him. So when you're the host, you're playing for both players, but you're just listening to the other person. So because of our online stuff, we can't do this simultaneously. So one person has to be the host. So the product game, as you remember, this is the first game we learned in our episode, episode one of Mr. M's Math Games and Math Breakthroughs. And so I'm bringing it back since it's been a while since we played it and it's great to practice multiplication facts. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna move one of these uh, markers and I'm gonna put it in, on the five. And then Dr. Brown, where do you want the other one? Because actually player two goes first in this game, I just remembered. Uh-oh. So five times what? And you can place it in any of these factors here in the bottom. Um, so I'll say five times two. Five times two. And Dr. Brown, what is five times two? That would be 10. All right. So I'm going to write here five times two in his uh, spot is a 10. And so Dr. Brown, uh, because you are player two, you get to decide you want to be X's or O's. Oh, that's a hard question. I'll be X's. Okay. All right. So I'm going to put here an X on the 10. And now it is my turn. So now I get to pick um, one of these markers, just one to move to try to get four in a row. Hmm. What do you think? Should I try to block him or should I go somewhere and start my own thing? I'm trying to, I'm, I think I want to start my own thing. So I'm gonna go here five times eight actually. And five times eight is five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. And so I get 40. And uh, since Dr. Brown decided to be X's, I'm gonna be O's. And so I'm here. All right, Dr. Brown, your turn. Okay. Um, hmm. How about one? <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you wanna move, the five or the eight? Um, let's move the five. So you wanna do one times eight? Yes, which is eight. All right. One times eight equals eight. Not 89. Um, all right. And you are X's. So as you can see, playing online is a bit clunky and it does take longer than it does. But I'm hoping that um, playing with somebody else rather than playing by yourself like we've been doing the past six, seven weeks will be a little bit more enticing. Um, and uh, Dr. Brown has a pretty awesome background. So, <laughs> um, all right, let's see here. What should I do next? What do you think everybody? Hmm. I think I have an idea which one I wanna move. Hmm. Let's see, let's see if you agree with me. I think I wanna move, to the, move this one to the seven because eight times seven, and this one's a tricky one. This is the one that trips up fourth and fifth graders the most. But I think mm -hmm. about it as seven times seven is 49. And 49 plus another seven is 56. And so the answer for the six. That so trip, yeah, so a bunch. Here now I have two in a row. Um, and I, I, think, I think I'm winning, but we'll see. Ah! <laughs> All right, Dr. Brown, which, which piece do you want to move? And just so you know, you can put the game marker in the same number. Yeah, I could. Not that that would be helpful. I am just want to let you know. <laughs> Thinking about territory. Hmm. No, this is hard now. No. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes. Huh. Now I need to really think. I think I'm going to move the uh, orange one to two. Okay. And, and so it's seven times two, which is 14. Okay. I'm going for a strategy. Yes. <laughs> yes, I can, I can, I can see. Um, and so I'm thinking right now, <clears throat> about what Dr. Brown is trying to do here. And my best choice here would be to try to block that nine. 
because if I got if I got rid of that nine, it would kind of r ruin his strategy here, which is what I think he's doing. And so um, I might, but he, as you can see, he actually got rid of the seven at, out of the three and the one and the nine. So I don't want to give him a three. I don't want to give him a nine, and I don't want to give him a one. So I don't want to. I want. I don't want to give him any of those. No. Nope. Here. And I don't want to give him a one, so I'm just going to move on to my strategy, maybe? Mm. Mm. So I'm going to move to, yeah, I'm going to do two times eight, which gives me 16. So let's see here. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, please don't win. All right, Dr. Brown, here's your turn. <laughs> I'll move the eight to a six. Okay, so we have one, two times six. It's 12. Oh, I didn't think about that for 12. <laughs> but I still don't want to give him a three. Uh, so that's 12. Yeah, you don't want to give me a three. <laughs> But I know you need a three. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> All right. So this is interesting. So I don't want to give him a one. I don't want to give him a nine. And I don't want to give him a three. So I'm kind of stuck here with twos and sixes for now. Um, let's do. Let's do six times seven. Yes. Which is? Six times seven. Same strategy as I did last time with uh, seven times seven. But this time I could do six times six, which is 36. Um, or I could do six times five, which is 30, plus a six times two, which is 12. And 30 plus 12 gives us 42. Um, and so let's see here. Uh, circle here, 42. All right, Dr. Brown. Hmm. What do you think Dr. Brown should do as he thinks about his next move here? Hmm. There's an obvious thing I could do. Well, you should do the obvious thing. <laughs> should, I, should I do the what? obvious thing? <laughs> should I do the obvious thing? I think, the obvious I think thing. it might be a good idea at this point. But, hmm. Yeah, I'll move the... I'll move the turquoise to one. Okay. So that is one times seven? Yes. Just seven. The obvious thing. <laughs> just to square it off. All right. So as you can see here, Mr. Maldonado, maybe he's not doing so great here. <laughs> this does actually give me a very interesting thing here. And you might think, what's the obvious thing for Mr. Maldonado to do right now? And I think it's pretty obvious. I should mm -hmm. block him. Now I'm going to do one times nine. Yep. Equals nine. So that means now that I have stopped this attack so far. <laughs> yeah. That's what happens when you put all of your eggs in one basket. <laughs> all right. So I have to branch out here, Dr. Brown. Okay, um, I'm gonna move the turquoise to three. Okay, we have three times nine. Which is 27. I'll block you too. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling this is gonna end up in a tie. <laughs> yeah, maybe. 27, all right. So that's blocking me there. So then now I am gonna do, let's do, hmm. What do you think I should do, guys? Uh, y'all, what do you think I should do, y'all? Nine times two. I'll do nine times two. Mm. Which is 18. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Dr. Brown. Hmm. Notice when you're playing the game, you don't want to give your partner any clues. So staying stoic and not saying anything um, and staying calm uh, and not letting your emotions show will be a good strategy. 
Unless you want to rub it in your friend's face. <laughs> yeah, that works. <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't want to give you too much. <laughs> huh. I guess I'll just try to use my position and branch out. Let's go and move the orange to two. Ooh, two times two. And that should give that one. And give me four. Okay. Four. So then I have to do two times something. Hmm, let's do, <clears throat> I don't really have that many, that many options here. Mm. But I could do two times one, I suppose. That gives me some semblance of something here. And then limits you a little bit too. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Hmm. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> I think this is actually going so long that I might cut it at some point. <laughs> <laughs> I think they got the idea, but now now we have to finish the game. <laughs> yeah, we definitely have to finish the game, but I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. And I know that you're actually trying and I'm actually trying to. <laughs> It's a fun game. I mean, it really is. It, the parents, I teach this to parents and to kids, and they actually enjoy it. Yeah, it's 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 a pretty hard game, um, and I could see like I could see kids getting really into it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. But now I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move the turquoise to five. Times five. <laughs> All right. One times five, that's a five. Mm -hmm. One times five is a five. Okay, my turn here. Um, so I wanna do, I wanna do five times four. No! <laughs> I'm supposed to stay stoic. <laughs> Which is 20. And now it's your turn. Hmm. Well. Well, I guess I should do the thing that makes sense. Um, I'll move the turquoise to seven. Four times seven. It's 28. Perfect. Is 28 and that drops them off here. So then that blocks my initial attack. And I was hoping that he would do that actually because um, yep. I believe that I won <laughs> with uh, eight times four. <laughs> hey! Look at that, Mr. Maldonado with the win, making you guys, making BF Day proud. <laughs> And Mr. Maldonado is the winner. <laughs> so salty. <laughs> now, that was a good game, uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, I appreciate you uh, wanting to play the game with us. And so um, thank you so much again for playing the game. Um, that was really fun. And uh, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you had fun, too. <laughs> Lots of fun. Awesome. Most people have heard of the Electoral College during presidential election years. But what exactly is the Electoral College? Simply said, it is a group of people appointed by each state who formally elect the president and vice president of the United States. To understand how this process began and how it continues today, we can look at the Constitution of the United States. Article 2, Section 1, Clause 2 of the Constitution. It specifies how many electors each state is entitled to have. Since 1964, there have been 538 electors in each presidential election. How do they decide on the number 538? 
Well, the number of electors is equal to the total voting membership of the United States Congress, 435 representatives plus 100 senators and three electors from the District of Columbia. Essentially, the Democratic candidate and Republican candidate are each trying to add up the electors in every state so that they surpass 270 electoral votes, or just over half of 538 votes, and win the presidency. So how do states even get electoral votes? Each state receives a particular number of electors based on population size. The census is conducted every 10 years, so every time the census happens, states might gain or lose a few electoral votes. Let's say you're a voter in California, a state with 55 electoral votes. If your candidate wins in California, they get all 55 of the state's electoral votes. If your candidate loses, they get none. This is why many presidential candidates want to win states like Texas, Florida, and New York. If you currently add up the electoral votes of those three states, you would have 96 electoral votes. Even if a candidate won North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming, Vermont, New Hampshire, Connecticut, and West Virginia, they would only gain 31 electoral votes total from those eight states. Here's where it can get a little tricky. On a rare occasion, like in the year 2000, someone can win the popular vote, but fail to gain 270 electoral votes. This means that the winner may have won and collected their electoral votes by small margins, winning just enough states with just enough electoral votes, but the losing candidate may have captured large voter margins in the remaining states. If this is the case, the very large margins secured by the losing candidate in the other states would add up to over 50% of the ballots cast nationally. Therefore, the losing candidate may have gained more than 50% of the ballots cast by voters, but failed to gain 270 of the electoral votes. Some critics of the Electoral College argue the system gives an unfair advantage to states with large numbers of electoral votes. Think of it this way. It is possible for a candidate to not get a single person's vote, not one vote, in 39 states or the District of Columbia yet be elected president by winning the popular vote in just 11 of these 12 states, California, New York, Texas, Florida, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Ohio, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Georgia, or Virginia. This is why both parties pay attention to these states. However, others argue that the Electoral College protects small states such as Rhode Island, Vermont, and New Hampshire and even geographically large states with small populations, like Alaska, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. That's because a candidate can't completely ignore small states because in a close election, every electoral vote counts. There are certain states that have a long history of voting for a particular party. These are known as safe states. For the past four election cycles, in 1996, 2000, 2004, and 2008, Democrats could count on states like Oregon, Maryland, Michigan, and Massachusetts, whereas the Republicans could count on states like Mississippi, Alabama, Kansas, and Idaho. States that are teetering between parties are called swing states. In the past four election cycles, Ohio and Florida have been swing states, twice providing electoral votes for a Democratic candidate and twice providing electoral votes for a Republican candidate. Think about it. Do you live in a safe state? If so, is it a Democratic or Republican safe state? Do you live in a swing state? Are your neighboring states swing or safe? Is the population in your state increasing or decreasing? And do not forget, when you're watching the electoral returns on election night every four years and the big map of the United States is on the screen, know that the magic number is 270 and start adding. So after watching the TED Ed video, I think one of the most obvious questions would be, should we get rid of the Electoral College or should it be, should it stay how it is? So um, answer the question on Flipgrid or on Schoology if Flipgrid does not work for you. Um, but I am curious as to what your thoughts are on should we keep the Electoral College or not? All right, I will see you tomorrow in class. Goodbye.